Have the End Times Begun? An Exposition of 2 Thessalonians Chapter 2 Christians in many countries who know their Bible, as did generations before them, are asking if the end times predicted by Jesus have begun or are about to start. They often cite three apparent circumstances that indicate that the end of days may be at hand. These include 1. Worldwide Evangelization There are today Christians who gather to worship Jesus Christ in every country and in nearly every ethnic community. For Jesus foretold, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. 2. Global Governance Powerful politicians, religious clerics, educational institutions, and wealthy corporate leaders advocate for global governance under a central authority. For the Apocalypse foretold, The beast was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. 3. Widespread Evil Transnational cartels openly profiteer from stupefying drugs, perverted sexuality, mob violence, human trafficking, abortion, and religious jihad. For the New Testament foretold, In the last days, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, without self-control, Brutal. Around 51 or 52 CE, the Apostle Paul penned an epistle addressed to Christians in Thessalonica, Greece, who were alarmed that the biblical day of the Lord had begun without the Lord Jesus having come to remove them from earth. For Paul had written to them two years earlier, explaining that the Lord Jesus would appear and take them up. The Lord himself will come down from heaven. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that the day should surprise you. While some American evangelical Christians contend that the Thessalonians expected Jesus to return and rapture them away before the start of the day of the Lord, other Christians hold that the Thessalonians expected him to return soon after the start of that day, and he did not come. In Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul set out in more detail a sequential scheme of end-time events. That sequence is signaled in the text in several ways as follows. Has already come. Will not come until. Is holding him back. Is already at work. Will continue to do so till. And then will be. The Lord will, by His coming, and so that. The same text sets out at least 14 specific actions and events that can be sorted into a temporal sequence. We attempt to do so in the chart that follows. The secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Brothers and sisters, alarmed. Who now holds back is taken out of the way. The rebellion occurs. The man of lawlessness is revealed. Revealed at the proper time. Wickedness deceives those who are perishing. God sends them a powerful delusion. They believe the lie. The day of the Lord comes, the coming of our Lord in splendor, our being gathered to Him, 
the Lord destroys the lawless one. All who have not believed it are condemned. According to Second Thessalonians 2.2, 2, doctrinal errors arise in Christian communities from three sources. 1. A spirit. Local individuals who are believed to prophesy under influence of the Holy Spirit may receive a mistaken message from another spirit. 2. A word. Traveling preachers and internet teachers, such as this one, may present well-crafted sermons or lessons that contain mistaken notions or doctrines. 3. An epistle. In the early centuries of the Christian church, Greek-speaking church fathers and Latin-speaking theologians wrote epistles to churches espousing Jewish myths, Gnostic heresies, and ecclesiastical structures that plague Christian communities to this day. Our best protection against doctrinal error remains continual reading, study, and teaching of the New Testament books, and in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. The world may be approaching the start of the end of days, so Christians should be watching for the appearance of the man of sin, the Antichrist. At that time, Christians should, instead, begin watching for the appearance of the Son of Man, the true Christ, who will rapture his church, destroy the Antichrist, and establish his everlasting reign.